<laughs> right. So um, I kind of feel um, I'm going to introduce Aaron. I'm going to read his bio. Um, so Aaron Powder is going to deliver a. Um, uh, we call it a masterclass because the things you're doing, Aaron, is outstanding. That's the title that is gave me. <laughs> yeah, uh, I deservedly so. I think you'll. I think you guys will agree. The things. The thing that the things that Aaron does for um, uh, with Fusion is outstanding. So, um, oh, Harvest Technical College is where you're from. That's, that's correct. Excellent. So, um, and you're an educator of 16 years experience. You don't hold that against me, Rod. You worked in education in both Queensland. Um, and in Victoria. That's correct. How did, why did you leave Queensland? Did you have to leave? Um, I wa <laughs> uh, well, you're only dirty we beach in the state of origin, but anyway, um, yeah, no, my wife's from Melbourne, so. Very good. Yeah. We didn't actually need an explanation, <laughs> but I just. Yeah. Um, yeah, trade certificate, mechanical and mechanical engineering. Yep, started off as a motor mechanic. Same background as yep. same background as many of us here, I'm sure. Mm. Pity me, pity me of high school failure, though, Rod, at the start, <laughs> and now I'm a teacher. They'd yeah, be turning in their graves, know. they would be. Yeah. Half my teachers, but. Um, this is the first time you've spoken. <clears throat> no, most definitely, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah so. first time at AU, so the the nerves are up. The resting heart rate's right up there, and it's never, you know, as you can tell by my fine physique, it never usually gets above <laughs> resting, but. It's pumping about 100 at the moment. So, so you've got some interesting, it says here, an indigenous teacher holds a passion for RC aircraft, Fusion 360, uh, NC robotics, and your YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah, I do a little bit on YouTube, and uh, social media is, uh, is, is awesome, you know. If you're not doing it in your business, I highly recommend it. Yeah, great. Yeah. So um, what's, the, what's the best aircraft you've got? Uh, we make um, scale helicopters, so these are helicopters with a rotor span of about two metres. Yeah. Um, they're made from, we build them from scratch, so I've used uh, Fusion 360, the CNC machine, a new fan blade for the petrol engine and that sort of thing. So as well as, you know, I'm very lucky, I have access to a quarter of a million dollars worth of kit, and uh, being trade manager helps me too because I come and use it whenever I want. Right. So. right? Yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah. We call it PD at yeah. the taxpayer's expense, but no, I... Pay for all my own materials, of course. Okay, yeah. so I'm going to hand over to you. I think you've got a, a great introduction to it, so um, I'll leave it in your capable hands. Oh, today. thank you very much, Rod. Thank you. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for having me here today. I'm, I'm inspired, I'm pumped, and uh, I feel, if not humbled and uh, privileged, to be uh, able to speak to you here today. If you like what you see, or dislike, don't follow me. But if you like, please follow me on uh, Instagram, uh, Twitter, and my YouTube channel as well. Um, before I move on, I have to do the, uh, the old disclaimer. So don't believe a word that comes out of my mouth. It's all rubbish. And don't hold the Department of Education or Autodesk responsible, please. So today, I'll uh, be covering about five different topics. Um, now, I've sort of been led by Matt. Matt's been a bit of a mentor to me, and he goes, look, tell a bit of a story about Harvester, uh, where you've become, where you're going to, and why you're using Autodesk products. Bit of edu speak there. We won't waste your time on that. <clears throat> this is out the front of our trade school, Harvester Technical College. Now, Harvester Technical College is the senior vet VCAL campus of Sunshine College. In the Victorian curriculum, we have a many strands. The VCE strand, where, ch where students want to go to uh, academic study, to university. Then we have the VET and the VCAL strands, where students who want to go on to do uh, trades and other employment and TAFE, they have that strand. So our, our school, we do not deliver VCE, currently at the moment. But uh, we're heavily into VET and VCAL. Uh, we roughly have about 150 to 200 students. And we're pretty much a boutique school, okay? And uh, like I said, servicing the senior campus only, so year 10, 11, 12, that sort of thing. We're a little bit unique as well because um, we currently house two trade training centres. So one was called an ATC. If you remember going back there to the Howard, uh, John Howard government, um, he came across the, he, he invented these things called uh, Australian Technical Colleges. We won't go into it, it's a bit of a political mind storm, but. Then that was finished in about 2007. Then uh, recently we got some new funding under the Rudd-Gillard government to build a trade training centre. And that came to fruition probably, I'd say about 2014. And uh, it's very unique because there's no other one around in Australia that both have one on one site. 
and they're both joined together. <coughs> we're, I brought this up for a reason. We're roughly approximately 12 kilometres from the CBD and our ge geographical location is uh, quite significant. And I'll tell you about that in a minute because we're really uh, blue collar western suburbs. Pretty tough region, tough kids. Um, and we've changed that cohort over the time by lifting the academic value of, and the rigour of what we teach. Um, now the reason I wanted to bring that to you is because where Sunshine was originally H.V. McKay Harvester Works. So roughly in the, in the late 1800s, a uh, gentleman by H.V. McKay, that gentleman in the old picture over there, he started the suburb Sunshine and uh, he created training institutions, churches, that sort of thing for his workers of the Sunshine Harvester Works. <clears throat> now he made agricultural equipment that was sold all around the world such as these harvesters, uh, ploughs, stump jumping ploughs. He was the largest manufacturer for Australia at the time. It's a shame, isn't it, how far, <laughs> how far we've fallen. But anyway, um, yeah, like I said, he'd ship these all around, even shipping them to Russia. But most importantly, another significant point about H.V. McKay and the Harvester Works was, it was actually Australia's first industrial relations case called the aptly titled The Harvested Judgment, where that was a, a fair day's pay for a fair day's work. I don't know if any of you have seen it. This has been highlighted on ABC and that sort of uh, documentaries and shows. <clears throat> this is inside our CAD room. I had to do that because uh, I've been working really close with Brenton and Matthew and uh, you know, I'm so lucky to have these guys at a phone call. And I'd like to point out too that being in education, we're lucky. We get Autodesk stuff for free. And it's saving us thousands and thousands of dollars. I won't go into it here. And just recently I've made the final decision to drop what I was using previously and go full blown with uh, Autodesk and especially Fusion 360. So why do we use Fusion 360? Well, there's a few things up in the slide here and I'll, I'll try not to read them verbatim for you. but. You no know, doubt you've heard already, it is next generation CAD CAM. It's, it has the ability of top down design. Now, I don't know, I'm probably preaching to the converted here, but the traditional way I was taught CAD, you've got to remember I'm, a, I'm not a digital native. Okay, I didn't turn a computer on until I think it was 1999. And, uh, and then I started my teacher training in what, 2002, I think. And the first CAD I was taught was a, a CAD by the name they made from PTC, it was called Pro Desktop. It was invented for students and for teachers to use. Um, that was all bottom-up design. You'd design a part here, a part here, open assembly and bring it in. Uh, upon setting up Harvester Technical College, um, I had to look for a new CAD system because that one was outdated and silly me, I went with that, you know, I'm not allowed to say it here but it starts with S and W, but anyway. No, I went with SW and that was the same thing as well, bottom-up strategy, okay? Now, coming into Fusion, and uh, Matt was the one who pointed it out to me, he goes, uh, it's not hard, don't be afraid of it. Give it a try. Try some top-down design. And just getting your head around it was a little bit hard, but now I find it way simpler. And I should have been doing it a, lot, you know, a long time before. The other reason we use it, guys, we, we have some really in heavy industrial CNC machines, and it gives, it gives us the platform the ability to post-process GNM codes to the machine. So as an educator, I want to get these kids up to speed with the future of making things ready for you, for you guys, the employees, the employers, sorry, to take on these employees, to give them a job and give them a go. So hopefully they're up here when you get them. It's dual platform, it runs happily, so Fusion 360 runs not a problem on PC and also on Mac, okay? And you know, you use a Mac, when well, you don't want it to break down, you use a Mac, is that right? My colleague in the front there is... <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry Scotty, I didn't know any Kiwis were allowed in here today, but oh, okay. Cloud storage. Well, there's a little bit of concern about cloud storage for us, for a secondary college. You know, we, we really don't care if someone steals our, our design on a little part or something like that, but we don't have a worry about security issues or anything like that. But at any time with this cloud storage, I can be at home, I can be at work, I can be on the road, I can open up my Fusion 360 or my A360 app and I can check my files, I can check my kids' files, my colleagues' files, as long as they've added me to the project. Um, automatic version control. Now this is, this is really good. When you teach um, vocational education and training, they're very staunch when they audit you about uh, you, you have the current version of things. So if I'm saying for this course they've got to have these drawings done, I've got to have the most current version of that drawing. If we don't have the current version, we fail the audit. So for auditing purposes, this version control is awesome. It keeps track of your versions at each time and I'll talk a bit more about that later. 
Um, like I said, access your, your mobile, your, your files from your mobile app. Biggest thing is collaboration. Now, I was speaking to Matthew McKnight about this. Fusion 360 has really become, it's got a cult following. And uh, I'm sort of sucked in that vortex myself. I'm really excited about it and uh, probably too much excited, so my wife tells me. But uh, it, <laughs> the other thing is too, it's really starting to go viral. There's lots and lots of people using Fusion 360. And uh, I encourage you, if you haven't tried it, go home and download it and give it a try. It's, it will blow your mind. It's really cool. And the other thing is, being teachers, uh, the students, hey, I was a kid once, <laughs> unfortunately. The cheeky little buggers, they'll cheat. They'll try and copy each other's files and submit them as their own. And when I was using other vendors' programs, they'd have to email me their files. And straight away, you'd have to dig, in, dig a little bit deeper to find out who created it. But you know they've stolen it off their mate. With Fusion 360, I can tell who drew it. Not a problem at all. There's, I can keep track of them. So they're not going to pull the wool over my eyes. <laughs> now, look, I don't want to get too controversial here, but... From where I stand as an educator, I believe our philosophy as educators need to change. And uh, hey, dustpans and widgets and hacksaws and coping files, they're not going to take our students into the, uh, the new millennium, you know what I mean? It's, uh, times have changed. And if we're still delivering this sort of stuff, hand, tools are very, uh, hand skills, hand tools are very important, but we need to move on beyond those sorts of things. And currently, too, in this environment, there's not the jobs there that there once were there. And pardon my little comical, satirical, you know, cartoon up there about the whale of steel. And I pinched this out of the paper. And uh, one bloke's got his head down. He's saying, uh, you know, what do we make these days? It's terrible. And the other bloke's sipping on a cup of coffee. He goes, yeah, I don't know, but we make a good coffee. So we can't be a nation of baristas, that's for sure. Um, at the college at Harvester, this is a panning around the workshop. Currently, these are our full-time engineering students working in the background, and uh, it's my colleague's class at the moment, Mr. Jadine River, sitting down the front, and he's cracking the whip, making him clean up after a hard session. I just got in there just to pan around to show you a bit of the environment. The also reason I put that slide in, we have a, quite a bit of kit there, such as some half CNC machines, so industrial machines, not toys, and uh, CNC plasma, CNC laser, 3D printers, uh, CNC sticker cutters, vinyl cutters, that printers, that sort of thing. So we're trying to give these kids the current technology to set them up. And you've got to remember this is a high school. We're not a TAFE. We're not a university. So we're very lucky in that respect. The next slide I want to show you is um, talking about student engagement with Fusion 360. Now I did some guerrilla filming in the classroom. So you've got to be real careful when you film students because you're not allowed to under the law, all right? But uh, we have a disclaimer that the students sign. So I just started to film them with my iPhone while they were working, probably only about a week ago, while they were designing their steam engine. Now, a couple of kids cottoned onto me filming and played up a little bit for the camera, but the rest of them didn't know. Just take a look back and think about how noisy classrooms were when you were a student. Just have a look at them all working here, guys. Now, a couple of them cottoned onto me, but... But they are actively engaged. They're doing their 2D drawings, they're doing 3D drawings. So they actually make this steam engine. They draw it full parametric 3D modelling in Fusion 360. Then they go to the machining centre to make their parts. And they also make some parts during man manual machining as well, manual machining processes. They're learning about drawing to AS 1100 standards as well. And we're talking about connectivity. Have a look. Nearly every, every student's got a mobile phone out as well. And they're looking at their app as well as, well as uh, designing on the computer here. Um, the next slide shows a little bit about our um, CNC workshop we have. So we have a dedicated CNC workshop. It, this is where we house most of the uh, equipment, apart from the plasma cutter. But it's air conditioned, so we keep a constant temperature as well. And here's some examples of parts that I've made. Um, now, this is for a client. He wanted a... Uh, I've got a part of the video for this. The main video for this is on YouTube, however. Um, this part, the client wanted a new winch fair lead for his four-wheel drive. And this was the original one that came with the kit, but it deviated from his, bull bar, his bumper bar bull bar design. 
So we did some proof of concept ones by just taking a DXF off the top face. And I'd like to show you that in the second video. But the next video I want to show you is using one of my students using Fusion 360 to do some 3D printing and proof of concept. Now in the VCAL, PDS, which is called Personal Development Skills and Literacy. The teacher, it, um, one of our female teachers, was in my class. She encouraged them to do an imitation Kickstarter where the kids came up with their own ideas. We weren't going to float it or put it to market, but just an imitation one. And Sean, he's this crazy kid. He's a, he, a lovely young bloke and uh, he's right into uh, wakeboarding and skiing and this sort of stuff. But uh, have a look at what he came up with. Thank you, Brenton, for the uh, intros yeah, I'm too. I'm Christy, and I teach literacy and personal development skills here at Harvester Technical College. And the engineers, as part of those subjects this semester, have done an imitation Kickstarter project. And Sean has come up with this beautiful invention. Hi, I'm Sean, and this is my idea of a Pringle dispenser. And my idea came with just in class of talking about Pringles um, and how hard your hand is to get inside. So I thought I'd come up with a dispenser, and it's been created on Fusion 360 Autodesk. And then we converted it into an STL file and then imported it into UP, the 3D printing program, and this is my prototype. And it just simply works as the can goes in and then you can take your Pringles out a few at a time and then eat them. <laughs> well, my student Sean has kindly uh, permitted me access to his folder for this design. And if we're looking to the left-hand side here in the data panel, we can see the date that Sean uh, drew this design. I'll close the data panel and let's look down in the timeline and let's uh, have a look at his line of thinking when he was, draw when he was designing this. Uh, we can see just down the bottom here we've got some sketches, extrusions, we've got an offset plane. So it's sort of not really high order stuff but um, you can see his line of thinking, it's working quite well. Alrighty, well let's, uh, let's have a look how Sean made it now on the 3D printer. Take a look at the time in the bottom as it slides open, guys. It had probably already been running for about 30 to 45 minutes before I started filming. as well and ABS is not really a nice thing to 3D print. You can end up with spaghetti half the time. And you tend to get a lot of draft or some warping warpage with it as well. So two and a half hours later he's nearly got a finished product. video I'll show you the winch fair leader the proof of concept but anyway before we move on did you think that was pretty cool that a kid did that in his literacy class so nothing to do with engineering he did it in his literacy class in his own time and it sort of blew me away as well because I didn't know he's 3d printing you know a couple of kilos of my spool <laughs> I got some footage but it was really cool um, this one is the winch fair lead uh, that I was telling about before for the client and we'll take a look at that this will be Recently, one of our industry partners came to the college and requested our assistance with his Toyota 4-wheel drive. He needed a winch fairly thick enough to clear the 60mm gap in his steel bull bar. Now, using Fusion 360, we came up with this design and CNC machined it for him. However, for proof of concept, we exported the DXF file from this top face and cut it out in acrylic, making a template first, using our Epilog CNC laser.
We've got one more part to show you if that's okay. One of my hobbies outside of work is CNC machining at home in my studio workshop. Now to help contain the swarf and to stop the chips flying, I designed a chip tray in Fusion 360. By exporting the different DXFs on each sketch face, I was able to precisely cut all the steel sheets out on our plasma cam and TIG weld them all together. Let's take a look at how I did that. Now I wish I had that sort of kit when I was a student at school. CNC lasers, CNC plasmas, 3D printers, we had none of that. We had a coping saw and hand file, techno hand file technology. In the next video I'd like to show, take it up a little bit more. So now we're talking about uh, CNC turning. Uh, now you've got to remember, so a lot, when I first heard about Fusion 360 before I used it, um, and I had a bit of feedback, oh it's a gimmick, oh it's just a little thing. It isn't a gimmick, it is full blown, full on 3D CAD CAM package. And I, I know I sound like a salesman here, I'm not here to sell anything, I'm just here to share in the uh, excitement that I, use, that I get when I use it. So this one here, another little video for you, run, all the videos run for about 2 minutes 30, so I trust, I hope I'm not boring you, but we'll take a look at this and have a look at how machines and lathe components. <coughs> In this little short video, I'll demonstrate the very first time I used it to create this nut via CNC machining. Now this nut is part of a larger assembly, known as the fabricated vise, which we do here with our students at Harvester. If we get out of the modelling window now and take a look at the cam window, you can see my tool paths that I've set up here. We can simulate those tool paths and we can watch it in action and then we'll go to the lathe and you can see it cut out in live video footage. Very first time I ever post process to this machine. I'd never used it before. So I was a little bit nervous, so I just did a simple part. So facing, op facing operation, centre drill. We'll tool change again, we'll come through a pilot drill now. And this is called deep drill, deep drill cycle with full retract. You want to get those chips out to evacuate. And now we'll use a, part a parting off strategy. Material mild steel, so it wasn't aluminium. I recently ran a teacher workshop for Fusion 360 at the college, where the teacher could come, have a try at Fusion 360 and CNC, and walk away with this little steampunk inspired desktop lamp. We needed to make some aluminium feet for the model, so this was drawn in Fusion, and canned up and CNC machined on the Haas. So now I'll step it up a notch, I'll do some uh, threading, in this strategy, we're doing some a facing operation, some profile turning. We'd come in and do a thread relief with a parting tool, final cleanup, some thread turning, six mil by one mil pitch, and a part off. Let's go to the machine and take a look at it in action. Now the footage is sped up. I don't run this hard. I am running fairly slow. If you look at my feeds and speeds, um, the reason that is, is it's a school machine. I don't want to blow it up. Okay, it's an 80 grand piece of kit, and uh, if we respect it, it, will last a long time. And it's taxpayers' money, of course. So here's some uh, threading. So that's a six mil thread by one mil pitch. So it's a very small part. And here's the part off. And there's the finished model. Now there's one more video I want to show you. And uh, if, when I come back to about social media and collaboration, uh, one of the care managers in the United States called Al Watmau from Autodesk, he uh, put a challenge on Instagram. And you know the Fusion F that you've seen shown around a lot today? He put this file up on, on the Fusion 360 examples and he said, Okay guys, here's the challenge machinist one. And uh, the winner will win a 3D space mouse. 
So I had a crack at it. Um, Scotty Moist from CAD Pro over in New Zealand had a crack at it. I think I believe another Australian had a crack in Adelaide. And uh, it's gone pretty much viral. There's guys machining in 24 karat gold. Um, obviously the school couldn't afford that budget for me. But what I'll do, I'll just, um, I'll, give you, I'll show you to you. You've got to look at it for a CNC mill part. And I'll show you the video. It's rather tiny. And think about the work holding method to hold that. So uh, reverting back to Gumby Mechanics 101, I glued it down with super glue. Now the super glue let go on the adaptive clearing strategy. Please don't knock them off. You can give them back to me. I much appreciate it, Richard. Can you catch that and pass it around? And uh, thank you. Okay, so moving along, let's uh, have a look at this video. <laughs> As you can see, I'm a wannabe filmmaker as well, but whilst I was preparing this final video for Autodesk AU, our Watmount, a cam manager with Autodesk, declared a challenge on Instagram on who could CNC machine the Fusion symbol. He provided the file in the cam samples of Fusion, and I've brought it into my design here, and I've put some tool pass on it, and we're going to go and machine this in the CNC mill, and I'll show you to simulate it first. This is on Mac, by the way, too, at the moment, not PC. This tool pass. We'll turn the yeah. stock on. We'll leave the tool pass turned off. So, first of all, we're using a 3D adaptive clearing. We're using a 2D boring cycle, a 2D contour, and now a 3D milling strategy called Parallel with a 6mm ball nose cutter. And we'll speed it up a little bit. And you can see it come to life before your eyes. How cool is that simulation? It even well, has crash detection. Let's watch this uh, cut out. This is the 3D adaptive strategy. You'll see it work around the outside contour, and it'll start the 3D adaptive over the top contour as well. It's actually at 200% at the moment, the video. So it's speed is times two. The tool change you'll see in the machine is actual real life speed. I've turned my rapids down to 50%. So when the students use it, they don't break anything. It's a little bit slower for them to use it. strategy, parallel, and I'll spread that right up to 400%, otherwise I'd be boring you. So. <clears throat> Total cycle time was five minutes, yeah, which is not bad. I could have smashed it out a bit more, Scott's probably laughing at me, what did you do it in? Go on, here we go, Kiwi, I've done it in two minutes. With number eight fencing wire. No? <laughs> okay. Okay. So you're using a, um, a TM mill, a Haas. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah, okay. Cool. Oh, cool. <clears throat> and there's the finish. These are the prototypes that I did. I was going to turn them into fridge, mate. I, I actually did this Wednesday. <laughs> so I hadn't, I left this probably to the last minute. <laughs> Alright, a couple of uh, Fusion Friday Fast Five tips. Um, I've got a little bit more to go, if you don't mind, and uh, some of these you might already know, and some you might not know. One thing, it has been mentioned before that about A360, I think Matthew mentioned in his presentation, A360 and Fusion 360 work hand in hand, okay? To get a lot of your files into Fusion, so Fusion will take native vendor files like other vendors. SolarWorks not a problem, I believe um, PTC Creo goes into it as well, is that correct? Creo files? So through A360 I, I upload my SolarWorks files, then when I go into 
into my Fusion, I can create a Fusion design from that file. So for you, some of you people out there, you, you guys in the industry going, oh, if I change CAD CAM systems, I'm going to be stuck with all these files I can't use and I've got to redraw them. No, that's not the case. So you can convert a Fusion model. Apart from that, the really cool thing about A360 is you can put in Word documents, you can put in pictures, you can put in movie files. Um, it's, uh, what, what did you call it before, Matthew? You said it was uh, about A360 being, you used the word and I've forgotten it now, I'm sorry, but um, it, it's great for keeping track of all your stuff anyway. I'll move on to the next one. Now, talking about the conversion, this is a Durati vice from Italy. This is what's in the Haas machine that you saw milling before. I got the STP file from Durati online, brought it into A360, opened my data panel, it was ready there waiting for me. By right clicking on it and going create a fusion design, it created that all that data, that 3D parametric data, and made a fusion model. Now when they designed it, they designed it in what I would say Y up, and I always design in Z up or Z up, and I converted it back to Z up design. And that's the way it's better for me when I'm milling, so I'm actually looking at it. Instead of being a horizontal milling machine, I'm looking at it like a vertical milling machine. All right, um, I encourage you to work collaboratively and invite others to your project. Now in Fusion, it's very easy to do. You can either do an A360 or Fusion 360, open your data panel, where it says uh, data there, click on people and type their email address in here. And if we go down here, I can see who I've been, so I'm the moderator, it will tell me, and I have access of who I want to keep in my project at any time. I've got my colleague here who also teaches engineering. I've got Matt McKnight, he likes to keep a track of me. I've got a teacher from uh, Italy who saw me online and said, hey, can I share your files? Yeah, cool. I've got Ruccio, who's another teacher from the other side of Victoria, up here today. So yeah, it's really great for file sharing. And if they touch it, I can see if they've touched it too, okay? And I can keep track of it. And I'll show you this in a minute with version control. So version control, keep track of your version. I did version, version, if I did say that. Okay, so um, don't, uh, over here I was talking about the eye. Make sure when you click, you got that joke, didn't you, Scott? Took a while. Um, when you click on the information here, the, you can check on your previous versions. And you can see this one here. Now, that was my student, Sean, who designed that 3D Pringles thing that I'm going to take a patent out on because I'm probably one of their largest consumers of Pringles. And uh, it's really cool here. You can see Sean, he's, he's played around with it quite a bit and you'll see that I've opened it and helped it one stage with one of the joints he couldn't get so I could give him a hand. And that's another good thing. So we, previously when students get stuck, you've got to remember kids are kids and if they get stuck, it just th some lose the plot and they don't want to do it. If they send me an email, hey Aaron, I'm stuck, can you help me with this joint? Straight away I can open it and go, yeah, just do this, that, done. And you can give them a hand as well. So it really improves the feedback to my students. Um, pretty much the last one here, guys. I've still got time. When you're, if you want to start uh, camming and start uh, CNC turning, please remember to, 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 to draw a profile and revolve it around the axes. Now, if you do that, it will speed up your cam timing, okay? And when you're doing it, quite simply just by clicking profile turn on this, automatically um, Fusion 360 knows that profile's there. I tell it what tool to use and bang, it's cam ready to go. And it's written the code. All I've got to do is post process to the controller, have my G54 set up and press cycle start. It's that simple. G54 is the work offset. Thought you'd catch me out, didn't you? Thank Christ you didn't ask me. Like, <laughs> yeah, so you've got to remember, I, I'm, I'm not a train machinist, I'm a motor mechanic, okay? So I've fallen into engineering later on as a tradesman. I used to work at uh, Dreamworld on the Gold Coast as a maintenance engineer. So yeah, my, my true training is not, even though I do have a diploma in engineering there, Mr. Moist, so back off, all right? <laughs> okay, <I'll, laughs> now we've got a fair bit of smack talk going on at the moment with the, the guys in the States, but anyway, um, guys, get involved in social media, get involved in the, uh, the cult following, and here's some people I suggest you follow. And look, I do love you, Scott. I even put you there in the PowerPoint, mate. Um, Lars Christians is a great guy. Hey, Fusion 360 Street Team. Search Fusion 360 Evangelist. Kurt Chan's another, another great guy. Matt McKnight, although he doesn't post as much as he should, but maybe with this encouragement, he'll start posting more on Twitter. Now, before I move on, I've got a little video from this gentleman here from Titan Gilroy. 
Now, does anyone here know Titan Gilroy? Heard of him? Yep, okay. So Titan Gilroy, just quickly, ex-heavyweight boxer, got in trouble with the law. He's in America, got in trouble with the law, did time for his sins, got out, fell into CNC machining and loved it. Mountain of a man, larger than life. I've sort of befriended him, become a bit of a pen pal with him. And uh, he's got this reality TV show called Titan American Built. I'm going to let him show you a little bit about fusion and then he's going to talk to you a little bit publicly, okay? Let's have a look. Today is a great day. I get to sit here in my office with the Autodesk Fusion 360. It's a cloud-based CAD CAM software that takes simplicity to a whole new level. We're gonna build and machine this mold right here. This is a rail system. The clamp engages the material right here. Make sure it's nice and rigid, and then we're gonna cut some chips. I used a big old one inch two flute and just rough the entire part. adaptive clearing and it's literally seconds to program it's simple it's fast it's efficient I can drive home and then boom it's right there on my laptop I go on my surface book out at the machine talking to Dana showing him tool pads we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna do the other side we have taken over 100 pounds of material off this block. I brought in a roughing ball to bring it within five thousandths, and now we're using a finished ball end mill, and it needs to be perfect. That's one of the reasons Fusion 360 is blowing my mind. Everything in your shop is off of one software program. It just takes milling to a whole nother level. I love this trade. CNC machining, American build. Boom. Hey everybody, this is Titan Gil from the TV show Titan American Built. I also have my own manufacturing company, an aerospace CNC machine shop called Titan America Manufacturing. And we use the Autodesk Fusion 360 program to make it all happen. I have this TV show Titan American Built because I believe that America needs to have a manufacturing base. When I was introduced to Aaron Powder, he showed me that Australia also has the same problems that we have over here. They've lost their jobs to foreign competition. Instantly, I saw his passion. I saw his videos, his teaching videos. I saw what he put into these kids and the passion he had for CNC machining and CAD CAM. Just a huge heart. So right here from the United States of America, introducing Aaron Powder. Boom. Larger than life, isn't he? <laughs> How good is that? So, uh, he's, uh, he's a fantastic bloke and uh, it's quite un unbelievable. I, I met him through, through the internet, through social media about a, a year and a half ago. And straight away he looked into me, he saw a few of my videos and he tracked me down. He said, oh, you use Autodesk. Your, your uh, vendor is CAD Pro in New Zealand and the boss names is Hans. And I thought, wow, you do check into me. So he must get people contacting him all the time. So look, I'm very honoured that he did that for me. Um, before I close, ladies and gentlemen, with some questions, um, I'd like to give you a little bit of a free giveaway. Um, did those fusion key rings come back, guys? Yeah. <laughs> Can you grab that? Can you grab that other one there, please, Brenton? Uh, thank you. So, um, Janine, would you mind popping up, Matthew? Would you mind giving... Now, there, there's a rubber band around the power. So what these are, guys, these are a little mobile phone holder. Richard, would you mind giving a stack out, please? Um, thank you. Now, the red ones fit better than the, the orange ones. Some of the orange ones fit... Or the yellowish, opaque ones fit better. So just briefly, um, if I show you here... 
if we take the big rubber band off, so there's a there's an, a part A and a part B. No, 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 that's what if we run out, take another stack. So over here, guys, we've got a rubber band around. If you undo the rubber band, don't shoot. I suggest you keep the rubber bands and shoot them at Scott Moise if you can, up the front here. Save them for his presentation, which is next. <laughs> that's for your comment last night on Facebook. Um, <laughs> calling me a wuss. Um, I've got to be honest, I didn't draw these. One of my carpentry teachers uh, by the name of Scott, Scott Hasselden designed this. Now there's, as every good design, there's a reason for design, okay? Either a need or a want. Now, Scott's, Scott's need came out of something different. Scott has an autistic son. When him and his wife go out, they, they love to enjoy a coffee. And to keep his son quiet, if they give him the, the iPhone and let him watch a video, he'll sit still just long enough for them to have a coffee. So Scott came up with this design in Fusion 360. And before I flew up, here on Thursday, I'm sorry, Wednesday night, I've made these for you Wednesday. Um, yeah, the, the, teacher, the students didn't get taught much that day, but I, I made all these for you guys. And you can see they slide in, so if, if you haven't got a pair, one will say Fusion 360, the other will say well, Harvester, and they just slide in. If it's not sliding in that well, come and let me know, and I've got some other ones up here. Um, I've got four minutes. I thought we'd just um, quickly take some questions and answers. Hopefully I can answer them for you, sir. Bring any platform into Infusion and, and create your own files. Uh, other vendor files, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, does that include STLs so that you can then edit them with Infusion? Ah, there's a new release about STLs. Okay. Yeah, and you can modify it in patch as well. I haven't played with it myself. If you go on and YouTube Lars Christensen, he just came out with a little video. Um, Lars also works with the Autodesk team in uh, America, I believe. You see? Yeah. So there, there is, in the latest update that just came out, that you could modify SDLs. Right. Yeah. Have you played much with Inventor? Because we're, we're heavily into no. Inventor at our school, and um, looking at how we can go Fusion, yeah. and um, I know there's a lot of free-forming, yeah. uh, really cool stuff with like that, um, as yeah. well as all the other that make, to, uh, make it... To, to be honest, I've never used Inventor. I've, um, I was a staunch SolidWorks user. Yeah until uh, Brenton and Matthew showed me the error of my ways. And now I've seen the light, hallelujah, praise the Lord, you know, and I'm using Autodesk, so yeah, I'm being jovial. But no, I, I have had my, my other friends who are teachers in, uh, when I went to Queensland, they use Inventor. Inventor's very cool. The main reason I went with Fusion, sorry sir, I'll get to you. The main reason I went with Fusion because I know you can have CAM for Inventor because it's HSM, but Fusion, it's all there. I don't have to do an add-in or a plug-in or anything like that. And it suits us purposely. But you know what lets us down? It's not Autodesk. It's the education's internet system. They're like 10 years behind with proxies and firewalls and that. And Yeah. Um, yes, sir. We also teach separate kids as well. I guess the limitation often some of the people is how much the teachers can find Yeah. Yeah, look, yeah, to be honest, of, of, um, if you were to ask me, Aaron, what's your proficiency in Fusion 3? See, Max is going to slap me when I say this. I give myself a 2 out of 10. I reckon there's, I'm using this much of that much. Now, for, for doing online courses and that, um, iTunes, I, is it iUniversity, is it? What? Yeah, have a, a series of uh, Fusion on there. But what I like to do, and <laughs> you're going to laugh, uh, as you can see, I, I spend a lot of time on the couch and I have my MacBook here, and I have a Chihuahua here, and I draw my school model. So I'll start with uh, sanding blocks or, you know, engineer squares, soft face mallets, and I'll just do all, all the jobs. And I've pretty much, from what I learned from Pro Desktop and SolidWorks, and Fusion is just way easier. Like, you've got no idea to do a, you know, revolve or, or to do a thread, a coil. You click spring, it does a spring. Sorry, Brenton. Yeah, we've also got a side where it's Design Academy, because we can't see it. Yeah. Yeah. So Brenton's the education manager for Autodesk. Yeah. Um, any other questions? One one last question before yes sir. Carol, I'll just throw in that there's a sheet metal module. Coming out, yes, that's correct. You know, that's something to, to think about for, for people that are yep. using better now. And SolidWorks now, and if, if you 
you're hesitating because there's no there's no sheet metal in the fusion. There is going to be sand. Yes, that's great. And because of that, you now win the Autodesk hoodie. There you go. Now, <laughs> it, may, it, it, uh, it might be best. I don't know if I'll fit you. you you're, you're, you're a shadow of myself, but um, there you go. Cool. <laughs> Look, ladies and gentlemen, that pretty much concludes my talk. I hope you found it interesting. I hope it was a... Uh, it's a refreshing change, and uh, look, thank you for your time. I do appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for looking after me. Hey, what did you think, right? Pretty cool. Excellent. Absolutely fantastic.